Um, I do see um, potentially a question here. Um, I think maybe uh, Dave is here. Dave, um, do you have a question? I do. Um, question. Uh, I have the the drop foot. I didn't have sure. a stroke. I didn't have any type of anything like that. I, I was getting a hip replacement revision. And when I woke up, I didn't have any feeling or movement all the way down the lower the extremity of my right leg. Um, I, I went through countless uh, physical therapies and, and all kinds of stuff. And I even tried the thing they had where they put, it was like, I guess like a 10 unit that made your foot move. And that was when I first, it was like been five years now for me. Um, the, I, and I, you know, they just, everybody's just like, well, I, uh, we're just basically cheering for you now. We're praying for you, kid. Sure, uh, sure. Um, this this apparatus you have, I'm I know I, like I don't know if there's like I've been reading. I, I, is there is there a cure for drop foot? They're talking about like I, I know with mine they had to do screws and all kinds of stuff. With the last uh, hip replacement revision, and one doctor said, well, it's a centimeter from the nerve. The other one said that it's impinged on the nerve. I'm like, come on, man. And the nerves only regenerate a half a millimeter a day. So, you know, I'm sitting here with my calculations trying to go through this stuff and try to see. And, um, man, do you think this thing would help me? Because it's like I wear the AFO. I wear anterior AFO. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't move. I have a lot of pain. It, the shoes, I can only wear certain size shoe kind of shoes. And uh, I, I'll be looking for any kind of help. You think that it would help me? Okay. So um, let's let's chat about a couple of things. So you said you had a um, a hip replacement or the hip revision. Hip revision, yeah. Hip revision. Did you have initially a hip replacement and then there was a revision from that, or was it a post fracture revision? No, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, I, they said I wore it out. Uh, well, this one. So I, I had I had one in the beginning. I'm gonna tell you my history. Uh, the first one, I'm from Ohio. We have the little black ice. I live in Georgia, but I'm from Ohio. The little three-step house. I slipped off there like Fred Flintstone. Bow. Fractured it. Arthritis set in. The other one got jealous, so they had to do the left one. And then the okay. right one was, oh, you trying to take my place? So it came back, and they had to do a revision on that one. But when I got there, it was a new doctor. And I was like, I was like, no. I was like, please, don't give me this new doctor. So the, doc the new doctor, young, they say he's a whiz kid. He comes and a month and a half later, it slides out. I'm like, I literally hear mm -hmm. it go. And I'm like, so something was happening with the pharmaceutical company and the hospital and the insurance company where they had the, I was supposed to get this piece designed to put in there. They put me in the uh, MRI to design it or whatever it is down the third and they did it. And, but they would, for some reason, they wouldn't buy the piece. So one day, because I'm a performer too, so I'm, I'm a bigger dude and I'm a performer as well. And so I, I would, it would, I would sit down, it would slide out, I would push it back in and just go. And um, one day, it just, I couldn't put any pressure on it. The mm -hmm. cup had turned all the way around to yeah. the back. And yeah. then well, this the is a tough one. Yeah, this is a tough one, Dave. I think because so what happens? I presume that you also had a nerve block. At, after your surgery or during your surgery, they probably put a nerve block in. Mm -hmm. And if, so it could be one of two things. Um, it could be actual damage from, I don't know if you guys know exactly how they do this, but when they actually, it's a bit <laughs> dis, dis, uh, disconcerting, but how they do a hip replacement is they will actually fully extend your, um, or fully flex your hip and right. externally rotate it and to dislocate it effectively. Because it has to be dislocated to be able to be replaced. It's right. a pretty ugly process, a pretty barbaric thing. But during that process, your range, your joints are in very, very extreme ranges of motion. And when you put a joint on extreme range of motion, the nerves that go around that joint can be put on tension and, and they can be damaged. So mm. in those cases, um, what, what most happens is you go through a process of peripheral nerve regeneration. Um, and that, that can happen. Now, there's no definitive way to ensure that you'll have that, that regenerative process go to the right place. So you could certainly have uh, regenerated nerves that make it back to the wrong area. So for instance, if you had a 
nerve that was supposed to go to your muscle, your tibialis anterior muscle, there's no guarantee unless a neurosurgeon came in there and literally put those epineuria surgically back together. They sometimes they will also go and they'll integrate the skin. They'll go integrate different muscle groups, for instance. Um, and if sometimes they won't even go into anything, they'll just go into a joint capsule and they'll create a, what's called a neuroma. They'll create a bundle of nerves and that will cause a bunch of pains. And those neuroma can be very, very painful. Um, so peripheral nerve damage is, is a, um, something you don't really want to mess around with, um, if, if at all possible. And so it's going to be really hard for me to say, Dave, that there is a cure for this outside mm -hmm. of that surgical re, um, sort of reattachment. Um, and that generally happens at the time of injury or the time of surgery. The other thing that could be happening is if the, um, if you did a peripheral nerve block insofar as they would do like a femoral nerve block or an obturator nerve block to help prevent pain following injury, those themselves can also cause damage, um, just because they'll put the injection at or near the nerve and that can cause physical disruptions those will not physically disrupt, like physically remove the nerve ends. Um, and in that case, you can just get regeneration along the epineurium and you have an increased probability of success. I don't know specifically what your case is. Um, it would be, you would probably have to know whether or not there was any electrical activity in that muscle to know whether or not we could have some, uh, um, some, regener some sort of capacity to, to come back. So that is, so the, I don't know if you've had those tests done um, mm. in terms of nerve conduction studies, but a nerve conduction study would be the kind of next best bet to see whether or not a program like this could actually help. All right. Because what, what needs to happen is we need to know whether or not the sort of wires are intact for us to see if we can try to reorganize the wires. Otherwise, we won't know whether or not if there's if there's a full transection and the nerves are not actually attached to the muscle anymore, then we need to think about different strategies. Think about using exogenous forms of muscle contraction, something like an, ex, um, an FES system, where you had a, um, a functional electrical stimulation system um, to help uh, basically take over because there isn't the capacity for an endogenous control. So without being able to know any more details, it's going to be really hard for me to know whether or not it would be a good fit. 